Your daddy thought. I'm totally honored, glory to God, to um, be in the presence of this sanctuary, this beautiful sanctuary, also an honor um, in the absence of the shepherds of this house, and to my new friend, my new sister, amen, Elda Yatrina, thank you for the opportunity as well. Um, Thank you for each and every one of you who have showed up on tonight. I just have a feeling that you will not leave here the same. It's not a cliche, but I'm, I just feel it that if, if, you, if you need a cure, you're in the right place. If you need some answers why I keep doing the same thing and, and um, <laughs> Minister Brandy who come up, wrote in her book, you know, she said, which was so, blew my mind, she said, I dated the same man for 10 years just had different faces a lot of times we find ourselves dating the same people but different faces no different if you were a second grade teacher where one class passes through the other but you see the same behaviors except in different faces and so that every year they have to deal with the same behaviors even though the names may change and so one thing that the Lord spoke to me Revealed to me today, because we're talking about soul ties and, and what's ungodly, what's godly. But the Lord said to me that when we entangle ourselves in an ungodly soul tie, we've made our relationship with him ungodly. When we entangle ourselves with people that do not need to be in our lives and we entangle ourselves with them, with what, what has happened is that our soul has now been stretched forth and manipulated and and changed. Our heart's desire has changed and pulled us away from God, which makes our relationship with God estranged. And I don't know if you know this, but in, in Exodus 34 and 14, it says that for thou shalt worship no other God. For the Lord whose name is jealous, we serve a jealous God. We serve a jealous God and I don't know about you, but I've been in relationships where it has pulled me away from God, regardless of how many years that I've been in a relationship with God. But yet when you find yourself being tugged away from God and you find yourself not serving God with everything that you have and everything that you are, you find yourself missing services. You find yourself dipping and dabbling in things that, you know, you're not supposed to be in of. Then that person has become a God. That person has become an idol in your life. And God has become jealous. Amen. He's become jealous. He said, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land and they go a whoring after their gods. We'll do anything we can to please them. We'll we'll compromise our relationship. We'll compromise God's commandments just to please someone else. To please our flesh, to please our loneliness, to please Um, maybe we have some abandonment issues. Maybe we have some, whatever the issues are, but we're looking for someone instead of looking towards God to fulfill the things that are missing in us, to fulfill the things that our earthly flesh has been craving. And the one thing God also said is that because we don't discipline ourselves enough. We don't discipline. We don't have the anointing that when we say no, that it will break the yokes and chains out of our life. But sometimes when we say no, we're actually giving somebody a silent yes, because if we don't mean what we say, and after a while, I don't know about you, but I've been in, really, I've been in situations where I said no, and next minute I'm finding myself repenting. So my no wasn't anointed enough to keep me out of the thing I just entered myself into. So we have to get to the point where I know it's so anointed that you don't care what they say. You don't care how they may try to manipulate you or control you to change your no, to reverse your no to a yes. 
Deuteronomy 4 and 24 says, for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. We have to understand that our soul is all we have. It's all we have. It's our emotions, our will, it's our intellect. And when we get involved with someone, not all soul ties are not bad. They're, they're godly soul ties. David and Jonathan, godly soul tie. Amen. You can have a sister that's a godly soul tie. You can have a brother that's a godly soul tie. But when you dabbling over to someone who's trying to control you and manipulate you and they are pulling your will against the will of God. We have to wake up and understand that this is not the will of God. And because there's sisters in the house here, if a godly man comes or quote unquote say he's a godly man, now there's all versions of godly, all right? Amen. We can have people that's just on the outer court, so they're on the outside of the church, they're in the back rows, but they, they don't want to come up to the fire. So they just come and they, they, you know, they make their presence known and they did the checklist for the week that, yeah, I attended church for the day. But it doesn't excuse the ones also where I'm saying that even those of us that's been in the pulpit have fallen short of the glory of God. There's those of us that's in the pulpit who have proclivities and hit and in issues that we have not dealt with in our calling that will soon expose you. If they're not dealt with. The biggest thing about finding a cure to the soul tie is understanding that it all happens in the mind. That's the biggest struggle. Should I call him? Should not call him? You're doing good with God. You're going along your way. You're serving God. You're loving God. You're giving him your all. And all of a sudden you get a get a text. You're walking in the mall, you pass a gentleman, not paying no attention to him, but his cologne reminds you of, hmm, I wonder how he's doing. Wow. Maybe I should check his Facebook status. Mm -hmm. Great. Or, you, or you've just ignored it, you brushed it off, and say the next day he contacts you. Now something begins to rise back up inside of you. And I want to tell you that there's some residue left of that individual in your soul. What, what happens in the case of a murder? And they go to the crime scene and they're dusting for fingerprints. They're looking for residue. If we don't get rid of those that have been attached to our soul, there's residue left in there where they can easily find their way back. So we have to get rid of those. Soul ties from relationships presumed to be rooted in love, involving sexual contact, and those rooted in fear of the occult, and usually the strongest and most difficult for the victim to break. I'm not going to try to be too graphic, but I want to let you know that most of the soul ties are formed through sexual intercourse. And knowing that there's bodily fluids that are traveling back and forth. Now, if you bounce from one to another and to another and have not got rid of, have not repented, have not renounced the soul tie that you was once in, you're going to walk around spiritually schizophrenic. <laughs> not only your soul is that you have, but you have their soul. You got the other person's soul. You got all these characteristics that are now flowing in your bloodstream. And so sometimes if you don't know why you're doing what you're doing or why you're acting out of character, maybe it's not you, but it's the person that you was hooked up to that you have not denounced or got rid of. One of the hardest things for us to do is to realize and acknowledge that this is not good for me. He is not good for me. But I just don't want to talk about it in a point of male, female relationships, even family. You can have ungodly soul ties. 
You can have a mother that's overbearing that wants to tell you everything that you should be doing. Want to tell you how you should raise your kids. Want to tell you what man's good for you or not. Should tell. Want to tell you well, what kind of job should you do. If they're always in your life. And you can tell when someone's operating in sorcery or rich, and, and witchcraft is from the point is when you don't do what they suggest for you to do. If they manifest and get mad at you and don't talk to you, they dabble in witchcraft. They're dabbling in witchcraft. That young man that, that you're thinking about, him, a young man that you're seeing when he's not, when, you, when you're not doing what he's suggested for you to do, and he cops an attitude and he hangs up the phone and he disrespects all this other stuff. He's operating in witchcraft. The light bulb has to go off, and you have to acknowledge that this is not healthy for my soul. And the longer we stay in it, the stronger the tie becomes. For Samson, when he slept with the prostitute, it was nothing for him to get up and tear the gates off the city and destroy the Philistines. Nothing was formed after a one night affair. Praise God. I don't know about you. Many of us need to be happy that nothing formed out of a one night affair. (laughs) We also have to know that we need to come into disagreement with what has been formed. See, sometimes we know that something's not good for us, but will you come in disagreement with it and say, this is not good? To acknowledge is one thing, now to disagree with it is another. It's one thing for a woman to be in an abusive relationship that she knows is not good for her, know it's not healthy. But will she ever come into an agreement to disagree that I don't, I don't need this. I don't deserve this. It's easy for us to be on the outside and say that she's crazy. Why is she still dealing with that? Why is he still putting up with that? But if we don't understand the longevity of the relationship, if we don't understand everything that's, that's been built. And then another thing, too, that I want to say is what are they benefiting from? Because a lot of times we won't leave a situation because of what the benefits we gain. Even though the relationship is, is toxic, even though it's not healthy, even though I'm about to lose my life, I done lost my mind, I done lost my kids, I done lost everything. But what are my benefits? What am I gaining from this unhealthy relationship? Sometimes keeps us in it longer than what we should. Because of fear of, okay, well, he's helping me pay my bills and and, and he's, he's helped me get this car and it's in his name and he done helped pay the rent. He done did all these other things. So even though I know it's unhealthy, but yet these things he keeps satisfying me with to make my life a little easy. So the fear of walking away from all that and having to start all over. So that fear would keep you in bondage. It'll keep you in bondage from wanting to start over. So if you're going to agree to disagree, then you need to know that there's going to be some cutting away. When you used to have comfort at night because there's a strong man with his arms wrapped around you, now you got to go to the point of I'm sleeping alone again. And I got to find comfort there now. I got to find comfort where in, in other conversations now I got to find, I got to, you know, I got to hook up with some with some girls from, from, from the church and build some relationships that are healthy for me. You know, there are brothers out there who are sincere in being a brother. Without any ulterior, uh, ulterior motives. Amen. They truly want, want to see the best for you. Not trying to get what you got. But just want to see God be the best. Amen. In you. Hallelujah. Good. So. Step one. Is that we got to forgive those. Who almost destroyed us. Wow. Amen. Who took you through all the heartache. And took you through all the pain. Took you through all the storms. Caused you to lose this. Caused you to lose relationships with family members. Whatever. You got to. You have to forgive. You got to forgive. Forgiveness has played an essential part in more than 90% of the, de- of the deliverances we have ministered over the last 28 years, unforgiveness maintains and reinforces the soul tie. It also prevents God from aiding the freedom seeker. 
How can you seek God for forgiveness if you cannot forgive? The Bible says that in Matthew chapter six, he, he says, I forgive you based on how you forgive others. So a lot of times we're asking God to forgive us, but God's like, but you ain't forgave such and such. And Amen. I know what what I know what he did to you. I know he violated you. I know he raped you. I know he did some things that really hurt you and scarred you. But I need for you to forgive him. I need you to forgive him. Got to forgive. Got to forgive. It is the key. A lot of times people come up and they want prayer and they want healing and stuff. And a lot of times what's blocking their healing is their inability to forgive. My back was healed in June. I could hardly stand. I couldn't even do this. And my pastor said, Andre, you got forgiveness wrapped, un- unforgiveness wrapped all around. I didn't know who it was because I'm not trying to be bound by nobody. She said, whoever the Holy Spirit rises up in you, whatever name, just call them out. Call them out. This was a Saturday. I graduated on a Monday night. I saw her at the end of the stage. She said, Andre, how's, how's your back? My back. Forgot all about it. Forgot all about it. Forgot all about God. Healed my back. Forgiveness. We got to forgive. Matter of fact, unforgiveness is not even in the Bible. So we, we have to forgive. It's not even in there. You can't find it. Search it. Cut all improper soul ties. Number two. Cut them. Cut them. They are hindering your relationship with God. I don't know about you, but have you ever been in an unhealthy soul tie where you don't even pray anymore? You don't even read your word anymore? An ungodly soul tie will have you so flustered. It will have you so frustrated because you're battling what your spirit says. But all the confusion and the chaos from this individual is driving you cuckoos. And you put more energy into this individual trying to fix it, trying to solve it. And my sisters, you cannot save a brother. Amen. You cannot save him. You can't fix him. He has to want it. Amen. William Murphy had a song a long time ago called Changes. He said in order to change, you have to go through changes. Change just don't come by itself. You got to be willing. You have to go through. You have to accept the pain. You have to accept the frustration. You have to accept the fact of. (laughs) All right, Lord, you got to forgive yourself. You got to forgive yourself. We've all made mistakes. And we're going to make mistakes in the future. But do you not think God does not know that? The thing that we want to do is we want to minimize those mistakes. <laughs> we want to make them as little as possible and we don't want to repeat them. So you want to cut all the improper soul ties, soul ties in the family. Sometimes you may have to just sever the tie for a little bit so you can regroup and you can regain. The thing is, is that we don't have boundaries in our life. We feel that bless you. We feel that we have to do and be there for everybody. And no, we don't. Set boundaries for yourself. Stop making people allow you to feel guilty because you said no. Amen. Stop it. It's manipulation. If you if you can't come, I can't come. That's it. That's all. Still love you. Talk to you later. But we got to set boundaries. Cut the ties. I love this one here. We got to restore the fragmented parts of our soul. The parts of us that has caused us not to trust anymore. The ones that I want to jump ahead. um, The ones that have caused us to not believe in relationships no more. Not believe in God's ordained um, order of marriage because you've been divorced. And you're fragmented, your heart has been fragmented, your soul that you've given, you know, because, you know, I'm sure some of you probably said when when I love, I love hard. You know, I've heard that from plenty of women. When I love, I love hard. Because, okay, I'm going to give you everything that I have. And I'm trusting you that when I'm giving of myself, you're not going to drop it. You're not going to 
bruise me. But the word of God says, have trust in no man. Hmm. He says, have trust in no man. Because even God knows, even the best man you may have ever encountered will let you down. Will hurt you. So in your prayer, you want to ask God, Lord, everything that's been fragmented of my soul, I need you to bring it back to me whole. That's why when you go to the next relationship, give me a time so I can stop. <laughs> That's why when we go to another relationship, we're going in tippy toeing. We're walking on eggshells because I don't want to go through what I've been through before. But you're going in there broken and all your soul is not even there. You're not even a complete person. But your but your hunger. To be in a relationship, your hunger to be loved really should come from the Father. Amen. Should come from the Father. Because when you love you according to how He loves you, I don't care if he's Denzel. Amen. I don't care who's the man with the blue eyes. Y'all like on um like Yeah, see, see the ladies know. Right? No matter what comes, see, calm down. The altar's right here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And you know, I'm glad you said it because that's what I had to learn. I had to learn that no matter what, God's always going to have pretty women on the earth. Yes. Just Andre, you can't have them all. Mm. Amen. I'm being transparent. I'm telling you the truth. So, not to be comical, but to be true, I'm like, God, you a bad man. <laughs> you see, when walking, them, God, hold oh, you bad. And keep it moving. But it's part of the discipline that you have to do is just make a joke out of it. And keep going, but you want you want to counterattack what has happened to you. And so you want God to restore the fragmented parts of your soul. Because if you don't, you're always going to find yourself incomplete. And when someone else comes along, and if they verbally begin to abuse you and things like that, it's just going to add on, and your soul is going to be so broken, it's going to be so crumbled, and that even when a good man comes, you're not even going to be able to recognize it. Because you've been so broken, you haven't you haven't healed, you haven't done none of these things. If a man comes and opens your door, you're gonna think, what's wrong with him? Because you're not used to it. Amen. And don't open your car doors no more. If a man can't open your car door, thank you. I like you. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. Respect yourself. Respect yourself enough to know how you should be treated. And you line that up with how God treats you. Can he love you with an everlasting love? Can he love you with the agape love where he can, he can look past your faults and stuff and still see what God has created? What's fearfully and wonderfully made? Number four, and I got one more and I'm done. Confess any remaining sins. Anything that you know you've done out of order of God, confess them to him. He's faithful and just. He's faithful and just. Confess them. Take a moment and spend some time with the Lord. Because that day is your special day. You are conducting a transaction with Jesus. And you are giving him all your regrets. How many of you have regrets? Jesus. The things that make you feel bad about yourself, make the transaction with Jesus. And he is taking them from you forever. And as a blessing, he's going to wash away all that stuff and make you whiter than snow. That's the kind of savior we have. Amen. And the last thing and the most important I would say is pray and take authority to cast out any spirits. Cast out. Possible spirits of lust, perversions, addictions, occults, control, anger, resentment, hate, guilt, or fear. You want to cast those things out. Because if you've ever been in a bad relationship, anger is going to rise up. Because you're going to look at all the time you invested. You're going to look at what you've given to them. You're going to look at all those things. You know, women good, y'all keep a record. <laughs> Everything I've done for this man. And I'm using man lightly. Everything I've done for this man. You'll keep an account that's going to make you angry. And you're going to make, 
it's going to make you like, man, I was such a fool. No, he was the fool because he didn't realize the trick that he had. So you have to you have to revert it. You got to revert it back. He's the one that missed out. You have to because you know you got to know your worth. Don't ever let a man knock you knock you down. No, because if he's doing it to you, how many other women is he doing? Is, is he even disrespecting his mother? Amen. Or his sisters or anyone else. So we want to pray and take authority to cast out any spirits. God has God has invested unbelievable power and authority in you to cast out every evil spirit and to break every demonic bondage. You are you are a believer and the power is yours. The power is yours. And what makes ungodly soul ties so hard to break it's easy to cast out a demon we can't see the demon it's hard to get rid of someone that we see every day because there's that there's the attraction there's that ties that bond you know no matter how much they even make you sick to your bone and yet sometimes we'll even compromise and still give them another chance and give them another chance and tolerate a little bit more and tolerate a little bit more hoping that they're going to change hoping and then also it's the fear of just being alone all over again we can't settle you can't settle having done the previous steps now use the authority given to you and the privilege of invoking the name of Jesus and command every spirit by name to leave you right now you'll be free you'll be brand new again you be whole. I'm sorry, this is number six, and I'm done. Break ungodly vows and prayers. If you ever said, I would never love another man like this again, you made a vow. But you made a vow out of the anger of what this man has done to you. So we got to watch the vows that we make out of our mouths, and we have to repent for those. For example, I'll never do blank again, Lord, if you just save me this time. I mean, you've been there. Lord, if you just get me out of this one more time. Or I wish she or she or he was dead or I wish I was dead or I've given my right arm to so and so. or I'm dying for a smoke or a drink or whatever. Or if I'm not pregnant this time, I'll never have sex with Joe again. All these are vows that we have made. So we have to be careful of what we release out of our anger out of our frustration because sooner or later because we can speak life and we can speak death you speak in death and then when things happen in your life that are definitely we want to blame the devil when it actually came from our own mouth so we have to be careful of being so quick to blame the devil and ask God God did I plant this was this somewhere down the line in my past that I released this in the atmosphere And now I'm reaping the harvest. So we have to be careful, ladies. Or this one, I'll never be like my mother, or I'll never be like my father, or my boss. All these are vows that we have to be careful. Amen. But all these are tools for you to be set free from ungodly soul ties. God bless you.